from one of the other characters. All right, so let's go back to. So again, let me just, you should have this warning, which is okay, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but let me just do a quick uh, um, recap. So on the post below the Zoom meeting, you have the exercise, we're gonna work. This exercise is gonna take us two days. It's gonna be today and then Friday, today is the 29th, I think it's, yes. Uh, so I'm gonna give you basic information about array list and that will uh, maybe we'll have time to get started with the the first one too. Uh, you should be able to continue on your own once we cover the material that we are discussing today but we're going to finish it up on the next class which will be on Friday. Um, so the idea was to click on this link and if you click on the button link then it will take you to this web page copy this and we created a new project called Array List Basics, um, a new class with your initials on it. And if I open it up, I copy and pasted the actual, um, what's that called? Uh, code from that period, from that class, right? From that assignment. Um, last link is there. Um, so take a look at this. The documentation is very bare. So you know how I feel about that. I usually like to, and we're going to do that now, is we're going to go back to the assignment. We're going to copy the whole thing because this is going to be, this program is going to have everything you need to know about our rate list for this class, this particular assignment, and even for Let's say you take in AP Computer Science next year. This will get you through AP Computer Science, this particular topic. The beginning of the year, we're gonna start with a few little things, and then we're going to use array lists and arrays. Okay, now, let's take a look over here. I'm gonna to go to where this is, the description, and I'm going to put the whole description of the assignment. There you go. Um, it's going to help us move through. I'm going to compile to make sure that I didn't uh, mess anything up. Obviously, I didn't. I get a, a message, a, a warning. If we look at the warning, it says un Java uses unchecked and unsafe operations. That's a warning. So technically, you can continue with that we can get rid of that. So I don't remember exactly when Java changed uh, array list, but it makes uh, array list a little bit better. Uh, the way it's written right now, uh, it works like an array, and we're gonna talk about it in one second what that means, uh, but it takes objects of the class object. Remember we talked about many times, like, the object class, which is the parent class. Some others, they even call it the um, cosmic class. Um, and kind of a, it has to check all the time. Uh, well, what kind of object is this? I know that it's an object from the class object, but I'm sure it has to be something else. So it kind of has to do a lot of work. Um, so we're gonna make it more efficient in a minute. But before we do that, let's talk about the, um, the difference, the main difference between arrays and array lists. Any of you know the difference? Because I know some students have been using array lists. Any of you would like to say something? I mean, you don't have to. Or you can also use the chat. This is a chat option in which you can type over there whatever you want to. But uh, if you guys don't want to say anything, I'm going to tell you what the main difference is. So an array has a very definite size, doesn't change. So I don't know, let's say uh, you create an array of 100 items. Um, you use it for keeping track of, let's say customers, um, daily customers. So one day maybe you have two or three customers, another day you have 80 customers. 
another day special sale, you have 200 customers. Well, the first case, you're wasting a lot of storage. The second, the third case, you ended up that the array is too small. You cannot make it bigger. So you can either waste the space or you don't have enough space. So ArrayBase fixes that problem. It grows dynamically. As you, need, as you need it, you add elements to it and it will give you a space storage to put your new element. So arrays are sta static and arrays are dynamic. So probably this is one of the favorite collection as they call it, or data structures. Um, I would say more of a collection because you are actually collecting things in there. Um, and it's one of the favorites because it allows you to save a space, add a space, but it's also easy to use. There are a lot of other collections in Java and in, more, in any language, but they're more complicated. You have to do this, you have to do that. If you remember Python, if you took Python and uh, dictionaries, you have to have a key that, and a value, and there had to be an association between the key and the value. Well, at right least you're still using indices. Um, different than arrays. And we're going to see that. Instead of me talking about it, I would I'd rather just um, talk about it while we are working. So let's first fix the problem, which is it's a problem because it's not efficient, but it's still you can work with it. But we want to use the latest is available because usually that means that um, it has to be better. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to comment the first line, comment it out, and uncomment the second line. Um, we compile. As you can see, there is no warning, no message, no nothing. And if you look at the code, the syntax is a little bit different. Here you have something new. Well, at least for some of you, it's new. We have an angle brackets, something that we call a type parameter, right? And it's a parameter, but it's, it has a type, and that's why it's called type parameter. This means that this array is going to be storing elements of integers, integers with the uppercase, the whole word. And so uh, it, it becomes more efficient because now the compiler doesn't have to go check in uh, well, what kind of object is this? Already knows it. Since he knows what it is, he knows how much space he needs, he knows how to handle it, he knows um, the methods and the attributes for the instance field that he has, and so uh, it becomes uh, more efficient. He has to work less. How do we add then how do we add elements to this? Well, we need to create an object of integer. And here it is. We do x, and then we say new integer. We use the keyword new because integer is a class, and it's a very specific class. And so we're going to be adding comments to this, by the way, uh, because like I said, this is going to be your own resource. Uh, uh, so integer, actually, integer is called a wrapper class. Um, it's called a wrapper class because it wraps around a building type. Let me open up a little bit more because I think I'm gonna need more. It wraps around a building type. With a building type, there is nothing you can do except use just the value itself. With a wrapper class, it adds to the building types of functionality. It adds uh, methods and instance fields. And the methods are, for example, as you can see over here, the add method right here. So this will rep this line of code will replace where an array will be something like I don't know, let's say a, a an array, uh, and then over here you have um, you have x. No, sorry. Uh, we put it like uh, since this one when you do an add. Uh, I'm going to put just zero for now because the, the array list is empty. So this is the replacement or the, uh, the equivalent. Uh, 
at this point, the array list is empty, so X will be the first element of the array list, um, my list, right? We created an object of array list, it's called my list, as you can see the new operators here. So it uses a constructor to create my list. And so we add. Now, a little bit after that, or before, yeah, a little bit after that, few years after that, they felt that this line was kind of a, a nuisance. So uh, there is something called autoboxing. So we can actually ignore this line. We can do something different than that. We can do, for example, um, we can say um, and y equals to, let's say 52. And now, let me put over here, my list, add y. As you can see, y is a building type. And if I compile, uh, before autoboxing took place, and we're gonna put something over here, autoboxing. So if we can compile, we compile, we see that we don't get any error messages. So this line is no longer needed uh, because our rate list now can handle building types that have a wrapper class. And um, all building, uh, building types, sorry, all building types have a wrapper. So it makes it even more interesting to use, more appealing. You can also use the remove method in which you actually remove from the array list uh, element X, for example. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things. One thing that students always, always ask me is, um, when you use the add method, where does it put it? Where it says over here, it doesn't say anything. So let's, let's take a look at, let's do, Let's see what it does. Let's go and build and write the code for a for loop. Uh, because we would like to see what is in this array list after we did all these things. Take a look. Uh, we added y, we added x, we remove x. And then we did something interesting over here. We put an index. So is the first element, is it replacing the first element or is it pushing down the rest of the, uh, whatever is there and it places this new value at the top. So here it is, add integer zero to the beginning of, the array of my, my, my list. So what does it do? Where is, where is this 100 place? So let's do a for list. A for loop, I'm sorry, and I, just the way we always did it. And now we have to tell I how far it can go, and we're gonna use my list, and we're gonna use a new method. And as you can see, it's already been used over here. And we're gonna say size. Now, size is gonna tell you the number of elements that you actually have in the array list, because number you should not have a real, or, or an obvious size. Uh, let me pick quickly that nobody is waiting. There should be some type of warning. Yeah, nobody is waiting. All right, let's go back to what we're doing. Um, so over here, we increment. We increment. And since I only have one line of code in this for loop, all I'm gonna, I don't need Basis. If I'm going too fast or you have questions, um, let me know. Um, so I am going to um, element um, I. And my list. I'm gonna say this. And now we're going to get. 
structures like you see over here. So we're gonna say my list that get and in the parentheses we're gonna put what I um, I think I'm missing one more parentheses. Um, let me comment this out for a moment. I'm going to uncomment it after we actually run this. So let's quickly look at what happens over here. Um, we created an object of integer 45, a building type of 52. 52 is added. X is added, which is 45. Then we remove 45. And then we add at the top 100, and then we add 5, negative 27, 20, 55, and um, I'm going to comment this one out first. Are you all with me? Compile. Make sure that there are no errors. And I'm going to run it. There we go. So 45 is gone because we removed it, right? Then we have 52. Um, oh, here. As you can see, this one over here has a zero comma x, right? So the add method will allow you to put values at a specific location in the rate list. So the first parameter on this add method, which is an overloaded version of the add method that you had seen before. So what did it do to the rest of the elements that we had over here? As you can see, it didn't override 52. It pushed them down the list. So the add method inserts in that particular location, and it pushes everything down. Um, we, uh, the 45 was removed, that's why it's not here. And we have the negative 27, 55. So here, let's go back. I'm gonna clear this out. And let's add this thing over here. Although we don't need it anymore now. Let's see this one. I like to know this one, how it works. So I'm gonna put some messaging here. I'm gonna say uh, the size of my list is, there you go. And I want to separate this a little bit. So I'm going to say system print line. I'm going to put two blank lines between uh, the last statement that is being printed. We can remove a comment over here because we want to see how that overloaded method add in fact as will be keep on we keep keep on saying that is putting it at the top and everything is being pushed down all right so um let's compile it see if i made any mistakes looks fine um okay let me move this out of the way right here so i can get to here right click on that and i'm gonna run this and here it is so right here at this point in the code, when I'm asking for the size, we have a total of two elements. We have 45. I'm sorry, we have 52. We have 45. We remove 45. So two. Uh, one, sorry. We have 52, 45. We remove 45. And then we added 100. So we, there are only two elements of it. And then we run it everything. And take a look over here. We added 100 at the top. Uh, 
Oh, that's right. So 100 was at the top, and then take a look. We added another one at the top, S3. So the 100 didn't go away. Everything has been pushed down. And if we were going to print out the size, we'll have two, four, six elements. There you go. Um, so you probably wonder um, multiple things, I presume. One of them is, um, can you have a method that actually, instead of inserting at the top or anywhere we want to and displacing the, um, the other elements down, um, would allow me to replace that value? The answer is yes, we're gonna see it in a minute. Um, and, but before we do that, um, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, the beauty of the fact that if you had to do this with arrays, you would have to manipulate all the other elements and shift them. Here is doing it by itself. Uh, so you have one way in which it displaces and the other one is in which it puts at the end. So let's make sure you, we do understand that it's putting it at the end. If we look at the last one before the insertion, it's 55. 55 was the last add method without two parameters. So what does it do? Well, it appends. It puts it at the end. So let's go back over here. And did I put it somewhere else? No. In any of them that you just have the add method, we can say uh, these add method appends, meaning it adds the element at the end. And I think you learned that in Python as a list. You can call it a list or an array list. But Let's make it my list right now. Well, I'm compiling so I can make sure that I didn't miss anything. Else. All right, so I did tell you that there are a lot of other things you can do with a red list. So we're going to look at what else can you do. So go to the end of the program, and I want you to add a paragraph comment. There you go because we're gonna add document, more information, documentation about every list. Once we do this, I want you to go to the browser and open a new tab. Let me see if I can reuse one of this one. So what do you have over here? Oh, too many things. <laughs> Uh, what is that? No. All right, fine. I, I'm bad. I always create new tabs. Let me move this down a little bit and that other way. Yeah. Okay, so at the top, we're going to type Java, a space, array list. And instead of just searching for the Oracle, I'm just going to put it in there. And it doesn't matter what version of uh, Java you have because the rate list, the way they are now, have been around for, like I said, probably six, seven, maybe more than that, yes. So if you have a different version, you'll be okay. I'm gonna take the first one on the top. And um, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff in here. And this is more than what we need to know. So we go into select from here, what really is necessary and it goes on forever. So first let's talk about the, the fact that we, are, we have to import it. If you look at the actual program, can I raise this? Yes. I can raise that. If we look at the actual program, the first line of code is an import. Just like you import um, scanner, you have to import a rate list also. So don't forget that. Let's go back over here. So uh, here it tells you where it's coming from. So these are all uh, library. That's why sometimes it's called library because it goes within 
multiple uh, packages and blocks of things that they have together. So what do we want from here? Uh, you, of course, more than welcome to read about it. I know how much you like to read, but we're going to take a specific things. Here's a section for constructors. There's a total of three different constructors. The one we use was this one. Um, hold on a minute. Let me check something. Yeah. So we use this constructor. So I'm going to copy this constructor. I'm going to take this one right here. And I'm going to copy it onto my um, documentation. Let's go to the end. I can put it right in here. I'm going to tap this so I get uh, a little bit looks more appealing. That's all. So it says that it creates a constructor into list with initial capacity of 10. So the default value is 10, um, a space for 10 elements. You don't know it, and you don't need to know it, uh, but it gives you that information. Let's go back to the browser. This one, I never use it, so I'm not gonna even touch it. I'm gonna take this one, because you might want to change the default value of the initial um, size. That's an option you have, so I don't know, maybe you want it one day. Uh, I'm gonna leave a little bit more than just one black line to make a distinction between constructors. Constructors and methods. There you go. So let's go back and see about of all these methods, what are we gonna use? So we learn about the add method. It says appends. There's the word appends that we talked about before. I'm gonna take this. And the return type is Boolean. Take a look over here. And that's because you could actually check to see if the addition of that element in the array base was successful or not. It will tell you, you could do that. Uh, so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna bring it into my class. There you go. And as you can see, E over here is, is the type that you're using. Um, in our case is the, um, what do you call it? The integer. If you go to the top in the documentation, it says that it's going to take a type of E. There are like uh, seven different types that they use, seven letters, I mean, for most common um, type of data types. Um, so if I go down and I see, oh, there's the other add method, the overloaded one, uh, in which it actually takes two arguments, the index and the actual element itself. We want this one. This one is useful. And uh, I'm missing the O, so I'm gonna have to add it when I put it in here. There we go. So it says inserts the specified element at the specified position in the list. Let's add a little bit more to it. I'm going to say and it moves all the rest of the element. Uh, wait, it moves the rest of the elements down the list of the array list. I think it should be part of the documentation if you ask me. I'm silly not to put that in there. And that's why everybody's always asking me, what does it do, what does it do? Does it replace or does it move things around? So now we know it, right? Uh, I'm gonna compile just make sure that I didn't mess anything up. Good. All right, let's go back to um, what else do we want over here? This add, I never use it. Know that it's there. The add all, never use it. The clear is very useful. So we're gonna take it. And it's a void method, meaning it doesn't return anything. I'm gonna put it on my 
documentation. So it removes all the elements of the array list. Um, so that's another feature that I think is really cool from array list. Um, how many times you wanted to remove an element of array? Uh, you could remove it. All you could do is set it to be, let's say, I don't know, something like zero. And if it was a, uh, you had an array of ob objects, you turn it into a null, but you couldn't really remove it because there is no way to remove something that is static. So he is actually removing, it's reducing the size of it. Will it reduce it less than the 10? No, probably it's gonna bring it to 10, but it will be empty. It will show us empty. The size will be less than 10 because it will keep track of the number of elements that you put in that right list. Uh, so we talk about the beauty of array lists. We never talk about the, uh, the ugliness of it, which is a lot of typing, as you can see. We have the word add, we have to put arguments or uh, parameters, and I don't know, there's a whole bunch of things that you have to do. Uh, so yes, if you want to do a, a in, uh, in some type of application that you know exactly how many elements and you're gonna manipulate them very basically, then arrays probably is the solution. Um, in the AP classes, students are doing um, uh, final projects and they wanna do um, um, like uh, board games. So uh, they don't use array lists for sure. They use two dimensional arrays, so it's very, it's very practical to use arrays. So my suggestion in terms of what I like or dislike is depending on the application, you use one or the other. And again, the beauty of our brain is that it's going to do a lot of manipulation that you will have to do it by yourself. What else do we want? Ignore the clone. The clone is a nightmare. Contain some students like to use it. Um, I'm going to put it in there. I don't know if you're gonna use it, but if you're looking for something, right, uh, you don't have to do another uh, for loop. It will be, it will tell you if it's there or not. And I think in Python, it's very easy to find. So the contains will be kind of a way it's done in Python. Uh, what else do we want from here? Um, no, I don't care this, I don't care about, here's the get method that we already use, let's take it. And there's a couple more that we want. These three, get, index of, many times you wanna know where's the location of this particular um, object in the rate list. You wanna know what index it is. Um, so the index of will tell you, you don't have to again, go through a whole for loop and create this code to tell you. Then there's also something called it's empty. You probably wonder why do I need it's empty when I have a method size? Size tells you, right? If it's empty, size will say zero. Well, there's some other things later on that you learn. It's called an iterator and um, interfaces with iterators require a method call is empty. So we're gonna take it. We're gonna take it because uh, you can use it's empty or the size um, as two ways to determine if you have any elements in the array list. So let's copy them all so that we, we don't have to go back and forth. We're gonna take this three over here. And so we're gonna go out to the program. We're gonna put it in there. Ay, 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 why I do that? I don't know. Let's have it. And I'm going to tab this. This. I need a space, a black line in between. And um, I don't know if everybody was in Zoom when I said that this is gonna take two periods to do. Um, so all those assignments that I put on, all the exercises in the last assignment, if we don't get to it, uh, we definitely um, would like to get you started and um, you can continue, but we finish it up on 
Friday the 29th. What else do we need? Let's see if we can. We don't need the iterator. Let's index off, it's up to you. The remove is very important. And the remove, the remove goes, you have two. So they're overloaded. The remove method is overloaded. One is you remove by the index, or uh, let's say you just want to remove an object. You don't know where it is. So these, these two remove are good to have. So we're going to take them both. And one of them gives you, uh, if it was successful or not, the other way doesn't. You probably wonder why it's inconsistent. And there are a lot of inconsistencies in Java. Anybody knows why? No. Well, I'm very old, so I know these things. <laughs> uh, so Java was, uh, the Java compiler was written a long time ago, over 20 years ago. And they've been adding more to it. And when they add, to make it compatible with the new languages or alike, not compatible, but more alike the new languages, uh, they try to make things look like the new languages. And so, of course, it's not gonna be the same as the original one. They, they just make things more modern. And that's why um, the inconsistencies show up. I think I did miss something up and then it's present, okay. So let me put it and I do want to get this started with the first one of the periods I was able to do it, and the other one I didn't. All right, what else? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, you're welcome to use any of these things. So the next two over here size and set. Let's take them. We're going to take this because we're going to use them right here. Uh, they become really handy. We don't have to write the code for it. It will do it for us. Um, so uh, set you need two parameters because you have to tell it where you're going to insert this particular element. And it's not inserting, it's replacing. Take a look over here, the word replace. So it will remove something that was there and it will put instead whatever new thing is. The size will tell you how many elements you have, not the actual size of the array list, because as you can see, there are default value, which is 10. And, uh, and you can, there's the other constructor in which you can create um, a bigger um, size of initial array list. Um, but it tells you how many elements are in that array list. Let's go back and I think we're almost done. You can sort, uh, there's a whole bunch of things. Some students love this one. I'm not gonna take it because you have to know how to use it, but you are welcome to use it. Uh, so you have two different kinds. So this is kind of tricky. If you take the um, algo class, we talk about that. Otherwise I don't talk about it. That's it, that's all we need it. Uh, Again, you can add to your documentation as much as you want to. I'm going to go about to save and make sure that I don't have any errors. No errors. Yay. Excellent. So what about if we do together the first part of this assignment? Uh, let's go to the top. It says it creates, it creates an array, uh, write a program that we will test. So we're gonna do everything in that same um, program. It says, um, an average list of 100 random integers between the values of one and 1,000. This is too long, so I'm gonna break it up. And, and find the two consecutive integers with the smallest difference between the two of them. You remember we did something like that with arrays? What was it called? Closest pair? All right, so I'm gonna give you a few minutes. I'm gonna type mine also, while you try to do the first one. Uh, so I'll give you a few minutes to do that while I'm doing my part. Where is mine? Which I already did it, by the way. Uh. 
So let me, I want to put something there to help you too also. Um, in case that you've forgotten. So here's a for loop. This for loop, I am going to make some changes, by the way. Um, I'm going to remove this. I don't want this. I'm going to put over here now. So here I'm creating an array list of 100 elements. And um, I use the math at random. I multiply it by a thousand. I close the parentheses and I add one to it. Because the biggest number I'm going to get, it will be uh, 0.99999. But if I multiply it by a thousand, it would be nine 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 and point nine nine nine. Then if I cast it to be an integer, oh wait, I add one to it, right? So that would give me a thousand point nine 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 nine, and then I cast it to an integer. That should give me a the max value will be a thousand and the min will be a one. So that's the first part. Also, what I like to do, you don't have to do that, is I like to get this a little bit closer to what I'm doing because that will be part of my documentation as I go through the exercises. I'm gonna put it right in here. <clears throat> And there are too many blank lines over here. Too much is also not good either. Yep. And then. All right. So, what about the closest pair? How do we do this? Let's see if I can keep. We have nine minutes left. I really want to do it. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna need a for loop. We're probably gonna need more than one for loop. How many for loops do we need? Let me see. I oh, know, I need just one for loop. And I need also some variables. And so I'll show you what I, since we have a few minutes left, I'll show you what I did. So I'm going to be writing here. Yeah. So I created some variables. And something that I always tell students, but it's only a handful of students that follow that advice, is uh, take the first two elements of the actual array list, in this case, as the smallest value, the difference. So let's say you're looking for the max. They take the first element and put it for the, assign that to a variable called max, let's say. And then from there, you continue to the next one, looking for it and making exchanges. Instead of coming up with, I don't know, zero or a thousand, whatever. I think it's, it's not that. So this is to me what I call a good programming practice. It will never give you the wrong answer. Uh, and then, uh, Edmo, not at model, um, BlueJ is fussy about uh, variables. If you don't give it a value and you use them later on, uh, then it gets bent out of shape. And that's why I couldn't just declare them. I had to also initialize them. If you use a different IDE, you will not have problems on just declaring the variables without initializing them. Uh, so I'm going to look for the difference. Um, this is meaningless because what I really want is this, the smallest. And A and B is going to tell me what the values are because it says 
uh, between the values from one to ten, and find the two consecutive integers. So we need to dis display the values that also, besides the difference, the smallest difference, we also have to give the values of those uh, elements that make the, the smallest difference. So let me uh, show you what I did because we're running out of time and it would be good if we had this in here. Okay, there we go. This is what I did. Um, so this is pretty much like a closest pair. I think it was closest pair in array, but using array list. Um, so here is, so since I already compared the first two pairs, which is zero and one, first and second one, then I'm gonna start my for loop from the second one. So I can compare the second and the third one. So since I am going to uh, find the difference between the current and the one ahead, I'm gonna to have to make the size over here one less. So it doesn't go over the number of the size of the array list and give me that famous um, index out of bound error. And then we already know what the smallest is from uh, the initial part of it. Now, anything that is smallest than that will be replacing a uh, smallest. So if this difference is a smaller than whatever I said initially is smallest, then I want to put it into smallest. But I also want to know what are those values. So I'm going to put it right in here. And the loop goes through all of it until it gets to the end. And then now we're going to display the information when it's finished. Let me see what I had right here, right here. So very slow typing. I'm going to just copy and paste it. And here it is. So this is assignment one. No, I didn't want that. I just wanted to stretch it. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Um, can you see the whole thing? I'm getting blocked a little bit. Let me see. Oh, there we go. No, it's not showing everything. Oh, the stupid thing over here. Sorry. There. Okay, there we go. Um, so we have the smallest difference between two consecutive. Why is it not showing the rest? Where's my. Annoying. There we go. Probably did something silly and it's not letting me scroll to the right. So, uh, so the smaller difference between two consecutive elements and I put the value of smallest in there. Uh, 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 here we have a line. So let's compile it. Um, all this is recorded, so if you miss anything, you can always go back and look at it. You know, you didn't ask any questions. Why is the scrolling bar not showing? I don't know what I messed up. Um, uh, wait, one more thing. So I want to print something else to give me one second here. Let me take this. So it looks nice when I print. Two lines. There you go. And now, let me clear this up. Uh, it's gonna give me, you can comment out all the other stuff that we did before. I'm just running out of time and that's why I'm not doing that. And so let's see, there we go. The smallest difference between two consecutive elements is one. 
And it goes between 708 and 709. That's pretty much it. That's what it looks like, which looks really nice. And that's exercise number one. Um, so the deal will be that um, you can work as much as you want on your own or wait until we do it on Friday. If you finish and have no questions, you don't have to join the class again. Um, if you're not doing anything, we, we're going to do it on Friday. Uh, if you have any questions, you can chat uh, or you can send me an email or you can stay behind and ask questions as before, after everybody leaves. Uh, let me get out of here. How do I get out of here? I did something with, when I move things around, things get tricky. There we go. Okay, so any questions? I have yeah, an operand type of Yeah, I have bad list. operand type and I can't get rid of it. Um, operand. What's the, you said my get, did you create the, my, did you create the object my list? Yeah, it works for get zero, but it doesn't work for get one. Uh, do you have a, a uh, what's the message? What did you say? I have, this, what is the message that you get? A bad operand types for binary operator dash first type Java laying object, second type Java laying object. Hmm. You, can you share your screen? Uh, do you have an option to do that? Yeah, you yeah. should. See if you can figure that uh, out. If you, anybody else wants to leave, you can leave. Uh, but if you want to stay and, and take a look at what's happening or tell me uh, what the problem is, if you have any other problems, you can hang out. Oh, I can't screen share, but I can like show you my code. Yeah. Copy and paste it. Okay, that sounds good. I like that. Is that a one is or exclamation point? Oh, it's supposed to be a one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with this. Let me copy this. My absolute value. Why would that do that? Then maybe something be before that because there is nothing wrong with that. Okay. Hold on. Let me check. Uh, do you assign it? Oh yeah, you assign it to smallest. Uh, let's see. It's equal to yeah. Yeah, okay, so the problem is not from there. What's, what's in the line above? Copy and paste the, the two lines above it. Probably just the one above it. Well, um, it's just the loop to, to like um, create the, uh, my the, list. The for loop? Yeah. So this is my for loop. Okay, hold on. I did something silly right here. Let's take a look. <coughs> Come on. <clears throat> Okay, so something went wrong over here. What went wrong? Why doesn't it like this? Uh, I was in a hundred. Um, 
illegal character. Uh, maybe just the copy though. Yeah, let's just the copy. I don't know. Yeah, the illegal character isn't showing up on my screen. Right. Yeah, it's showing up in the next one. Um, that's because I copy and pasted. It's giving me a headache now. Oh, uh, I don't see anything wrong either. Let me check the, the code. Um, let's see if there is any other stupid things going on over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I copy and paste it, I should have put it into text file and get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, there should be one more probably. No. Uh, did you close all the parentheses here? Yeah, it did. Yeah. No, I don't have any problems. Your code is good. Um, let me look at your. Yeah, I don't know what you did. <laughs> um, you can attach a file, actually, if you want to. Or send me your file and I'll look at it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the code. Let me check again what the message was. The original message. I, um, yeah. Who knows my absolute value? And it's under my list that get. Oh, they're nice. Thank you. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Downloads? I don't know where I put it. Oh, yes, I have it. Okay, good. Um, let's take a look at it. Now I'm very curious. Why you had that problem? Um, go back to the view, and I'm going to add from downloads. Where's downloads? There we go. I think this is yours, May 27, yeah, okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is it. And So let me just make a few changes. I don't think that should be the problem at all because, oh yes. Okay, okay, that's the problem. So a built-in type, right? One is a built-in type. And array lists only work for objects. That's the reason why they created wrapper classes. So um, it should work now. <laughs> Oh, oh wait, okay. I need one more. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I Thanks. need it right here. Yes. Uh, I'm in the right place? No, I think I'm not. Or well, maybe I am. I don't know. Um, so I can get rid of that arrow over there. Uh, not arrow, the warning. I think it's before. After, yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Yes, you're right. I do that very often. Oh, dummy. Right, 
So array list cannot handle building types when you don't have a type. So uh, one of the reasons why wrapper classes are, exist is to turn building types into objects and then you can use it for collections. So it was all the way at the top. It was not even close. So yeah, I forgot to add integer, I guess. Yes, yes. So you could actually add a string, you could add um, objects of card, any type of objects without having the, the types over here, the parameters, because they're all objects. But if you try to add a, um, a built-in type or get or do anything with it, it will complain. I'm surprised it didn't complain over here, though. It complained on this one. You said that the red was under here, right? on the ticket one. I don't know. Uh, that could be only because Blue Chain is not the super smart uh, IDE. Anyway, so I really had fun with you guys. It was good to have you back. I miss the classroom a lot, even though sometimes it's like a, I'm exhausted. It was yeah, noisy. Um, uh, I, I would like to have few more, one more class so we can finish this. You can work on your own if you want to, but I also want to have a uh, meet again as a group to have fun. I'm trying to figure out how I can do that uh, so I can have uh, more attendance. And that's why I put out there that form to tell me if there is a better time to, to be in the classroom and the Zoom classroom. I know that this is only for many of you. Um, so if you have any questions, please email me or contact me any way you want to. I'm in Messenger. You know that we have a Students for Students and we have Discord. I know some of you are there already. Um, besides that, I'll see you Friday or whenever you want to contact me. Okay? See you. Thank you. Bye. You're Bye. welcome. Thank you. And it was Thank great you. to have you. You're welcome. Bye-bye.